Okay, we've got two stories revolving around the Calgary Flames to talk about in today's video. But what I wanted to do before diving into some of the new updates was go over a few conversations surrounding goaltender Jacob Markstrom. Because we had already made a video earlier in the week talking about how Marky was on the block, how Marky had apparently accepted a trade to the New Jersey Devils, but how that trade did not go through because of that $6 million AAV salary till the end of 25-26. Now, we did have a few, like, conflicting reports, people saying that he did accept a trade, others saying that the trade never actually got to him, so he never needed to waive the no-trade clause, or the no-move clause, excuse me, that he does have on that contract, but as a 34-year-old goaltender who has been so good this season with a 916 save percentage, you could very well say that Markey is one of the hotter commodities on the trade market, and that's not just because he's a Calgary Flame, ha ha. But this is a conversation that was started up a few days ago on the 15th. Salim Valji went out there and tweeted this out. Fun moment. Calgary Flames goalie Jacob Markstrom spent the last three-ish minutes of warm-ups giving pucks to the fans at both sides of the rink. Even when he's been in a backup position, I've never seen him do that before. Ever. And there was sort of a solemn sad-ish kind of vibe that I saw a lot of Flames fans exhibiting when they saw this sentimental, emotional Jacob Markstrom moment paying tribute to the fans and doing his part in making these fan experiences a lot more fun. I mean, look at some of the replies. We're going to be hyper-analyzing every move that Marky makes. Final gift to the fans before he gets traded. Gives me trilling down at the bench vibes. Oh, he's gone. Speculation, speculation. That's kind of the vibe that we got from Calgary Flames fans. Because, of course, this moment, February 15th, this came after the rumors to New Jersey ended up manifesting. So this was a pretty big deal. And it gets even crazier when you talk about some of the speculation that has been tossed out there by other Flames fans. This is a post made on the R Flames sub with 106 upvotes, make it 107, that goes out there and analyzes the different things that coincide with a Markey trade. I think a trade is coming, Prof Seismitoad goes out there and says, Number one, he didn't take the morning skate today. Instead, it's the goalie on the IR. Two, during warm-up today, the press box guy said he was giving pucks to people in the stands instead of warming up properly, which they have never seen him do. Three, the fact that he did not get put in the game when this would be a must-win kind of scenario to stay in the playoff race. And four, in the press conference after the game, Dustin Wolf said he wasn't expecting to play today. It really sounds like the Flames don't want to risk him getting hurt right now and ruining a trade. If Vladar or Wolf plays on Saturday, that's gotta be confirmation of this, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to the game in which they're talking about this, they are talking about the 6-3 game that the Calgary Flames ended up losing to the San Jose Sharks. And of course, if you go over to the goaltenders, it was that Dustin Wolf that suited up with his 806 save percentage in the game, allowing six goals and 31 shots against San Jose. So this entire thing of Markey potentially getting traded, etc., etc., it all seemed to have been speculation up to this point. But then we had ourselves even more news that kind of sealed the deal on this conversation. And it comes to us via Eric Francis on Flames Talk with Pat Steinberg on Sportsnet 960 yesterday. Take a look at this tweet. I'd be very, very surprised if this deal with Markstrom isn't done by March 8th. As a matter of fact, I think it'll be done within the week. Wait, WTF, the trade talks picked up that much? And this Twitter user goes out there and says, more so it's that Eric Francis thinks Markstrom would be in favor of getting moved if it came to it. They also talked about how Markstrom wants to win at this point in his career and how some of his close friends will be gone by the end of the season. Close friends, if you want to assume Calgary Flames guys, you could talk about pretty much most of their defense core, and then there are some other guys tossed around there too. I mean, realistically, you just traded away Lindholm. There are new rumors about Rasmus Anderson getting moved, so those are two Swedes that we just talked about right there. Noah Hannafin's probably going to get moved. Chris Tanev is probably going to get moved. So for Marky Mark, if he's in a position where some of his closest friends are probably going to leave this team and he wants to remain competitive... 
There very well could be an opportunity elsewhere in a place like New Jersey, for example. We've been all talking about New Jersey. That's like the biggest fit that everybody seems to be tossing out there. And New Jersey Devils fans seem to not be getting enough of it either. They keep clamoring at the bit saying, hey, give us Marky, give us Marky, give us Marky. They want this guy. And it's very apparent that the trade talks have still been there. So whether or not Eric Francis's prediction is correct and the trade actually does happen within the week, we will see. But this is our update on Markstrom. Finally, though. We also have ourselves a conversation to have about Marky Mark's teammate, one of his defensemen that he has been accustomed with for a long time in Chris Tanev. This is because when it comes to the Tanev trade conversation, his $4.5 million a year to the end of this season for a shot blocking defenseman, a prime shot blocker in the NHL, is indeed valuable. And we had ourselves this new article published in the Oilers Nation, which talks about how the Oilers are making a push for Flames defenseman Chris Tanev. Tanev. Now, the Oilers, hey, we've talked about the idea of Tanev and the Oilers in the past, but new updates report that their push has been pretty strong the past little while. Let's go out there and read what they're talking about. Article, by the way, will be linked in the description if you want to read this post made by Zach. The recent reports of the Oilers push came from Vancouver's Rick Dollywall, who is one of the definitive insiders covering the Vancouver Canucks. Dolly Wall was on Sportsnet 650's Halford and Bruff show Friday, where he discussed the latest about Tanev's availability. The Canucks are continuing to monitor everything, big and small, Dolly Wall says. They're continuing to work the phones, and their preference is not to trade any more first-round picks, but as I like to say all the time, hockey people change their minds. You can look into all players, big names, depth players, it's all about the cost of acquisition. They're still looking for a defenseman. You can't have enough for the playoffs. Seven, eight deep on the blue line, etc., etc. The price on Chris Tanev is obviously pretty steep, but that's when teams like the Canucks have to get creative. When you like a player as much as the Canucks like Tanev, you have to get creative. The Canucks have not given up on Tanev. Sources say the Oilers are making a push for Tanev. You certainly don't want him going to that team if you're the Canucks. Dallas, high interest in Tanev too. Many others. The Maple Leafs are still there. Winnipeg as well. And so when it comes to this analysis done on Tanev from the Edmonton POV, this article is the reason why I brought it up. I like it a lot because Zach goes out there and talks about how for Tanev at 34 years old, he isn't as spry as he once was, but he remains an incredibly effective player. This season, according to Hockey Viz, Tanev has provided offense at 1% rate above league average and defense at a staggering 19% above league average. All in all, Hockey Viz cites his impact at that well above a first pairing defenseman, something he's maintained in three of the last four years. For comparison's sake, here are the Oilers' six defensemen and where Hockey Viz pegs their impacts represented as a percentage above or below league average. So Bouchard is a plus 2% offensive zone impact and plus 5% defensive zone impact. Vinny Deharnay, for example, is a minus 7 offensive zone impact and a 9% defensive zone impact. Chris Tanev is an 18% defensively minded defenseman in terms of his impact above league average. So this article is essentially saying that it would be a pretty good idea for the Flames to trade Tanev to the Oilers, but of course, who in their right mind would expect an Oilers and Flames trade in this kind of way? For one of the top trade ships that every team seems to want, especially those north of the border. Chris Tanev has been one of the bigger trade pieces, so is a trade to Edmonton really going to manifest itself here? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're an Oilers or a Calgary Flames fan, what are your thoughts on the idea of Tanev making his way over to the Oil? Also, what are your thoughts on the idea of Markey getting traded by March 8th or within the span of the next few days? Is it going to be New Jersey? That's the biggest team that everybody is talking about. But... Do you see another fit somewhere else on the horizon? If you're a Devils fan, what are your thoughts about this entire trade idea? We'd already made the last video just kind of talking about the idea that was there. Here it is, the almost trade Holtz for Jacob Markstrom. But hey, if it isn't an Alexander Holtz that you're interested in trading away, what is it instead that you think would get the job done? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 99. And bye.